everyone. I wanted to uh, do a refresher video uh, about the papacy in Rome. I received an email recently from uh, someone asking that maybe I would do another video or explanation on the blasphemies of the papacy. Uh, I know that I've done uh, extensive teaching on this on my channel for the last few months, uh, but I felt that this email brought to my attention that I received from this person that there are still many uh, members of the body of Christ, genuine born-again believers that still do not understand yet um, the, the, um, the evils of the papacy uh, and how the Vatican in Rome uh, completely fulfills Revelation 17. Uh, so I, I'm going to eventually make a more um, extended series of videos uh, refreshing the memory uh, for all of us on, on the papacy in Rome from Daniel and Revelation uh, and even some writings from Paul. Uh, and maybe even sharing some things that the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me, uh, especially over this last, uh, say, three or four years. So I will be making a more extensive video, but I just wanted to do a quick recap um, in answer to this one email that I received. Uh, it was a person writing me um, concerned that there are, like I said, members of the body of Christ that are um, blindly following the Pope, believing that he is a man of God, that how could he be evil, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are many that um, I've dealt with even in my own home church when I've brought things to light, um, as the Lord has allowed me to teach a class or something, things that I've been able to bring to light for people about the papacy in Rome and comparing it to uh, the prophetical scriptures. And I have to admit, they were quite shocked because, let's face it, unless the Holy Spirit brings these things to your attention, I'm of the opinion that you're not going to look into these things, that you're not going to see them on the surface, um, uh, that these things are hidden um, until the Lord reveals them to you or to an individual about the papacy in Rome. Uh, on the outside, uh, the Pope looks like a man of God. Remember, uh, the man of sin will have the outward appearance of a lamb, but inwardly speak the words of the dragon. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there's so much that I could go over, but this is an answer to this email um, that I received. I wanted to read a few uh, topics for you that I found online here, and these are just a few examples of the blasphemies of the Popes of Rome down through the century. Um, the centuries. I am personally convinced by the Holy Spirit, I believe, that one of the Popes of Rome will be the Antichrist, the man of sin. Um, I personally believe that the Holy Spirit has taught me, and again, you can disagree with me on this, and it's fine. Uh, it's, it's not a problem. I believe that the false prophet and the Antichrist are one and the same man. Uh, I do not believe that they are two men coming. I believe that they are one and the same man, and I believe that the Pope of Rome fits this description perfectly. Like I said, time will tell. I, I don't make it a dispute with my brothers and sisters, but I simply am sharing what I feel the revelations that God has given me. But I believe that the popes of Rome have down through the centuries um, uh, claimed to be divine, claimed to be God on earth. Uh, you know, Daniel prophesies that the man of sin um, will speak great things against the Most High, blasphemies against the Most High, unheard of things, uh, and eventually will go into a... Um, a third built temple of God in Jerusalem and declare himself to be God and perform lying signs and wonders. And I do believe that this man of sin that will eventually arise will come from the seven hills of Rome. Uh, and of course, I wanted to eventually in the future go over Revelation chapter 17 again. I want to go over scripture from Daniel and also things and make a list of things that the Holy Spirit has shown me about the papacy in Rome and how I believe that perfectly fits what will eventually be the fulfillment of Daniel's and Revelation's description of the Antichrist, the man of sin. And of course, if you look up the word anti, it doesn't necessarily mean in all cases against. It can also mean in place of or a substitute for. Uh, and of course, we know that the popes of Rome call themselves the vicar of Christ. Vicar can also mean a substitute for, uh, in place of. When Jesus ascended back to heaven from the Mount of Olives, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He never left Peter in charge of his, of his church uh, when he left. All authority has been given to Christ. Christ is our head. Um, Catholic doctrine teaches that we must have a visible head on earth while Christ is gone. This is not true. We know that we walk by faith, not by sight, that we can have a personal relationship with our head, who is Christ, regardless of whether we see him physically or not. We are to submit only to one, and that is to Christ. Uh, also, Jesus was very clear when he said, Call no man on earth your father, for you have one father, 
and he is in heaven. The very fact that the Pope takes the title of God, the Holy Father, that's blasphemous right there. That's just one thing that is blasphemy right there. Really look into this. What did Jesus say? Call no man on earth your father. You have one father and he is in heaven. It's almost as if prophetically Jesus was saying that there will be an office or a position or a title coming where a man on earth claims to be the Holy Father and we're not to acknowledge this. And Jesus was preparing us ahead of time to understand these things. But I believe that there are a lot of Protestants in different denominations that are believing that the Pope is a godly man. Um, you may not agree with all the Catholic doctrine, but you are a Protestant who simply believes that he's, he's a good guy and, and a godly man. I'm here to tell you that um, the scriptures plainly teach that even Satan can transform himself to look like an angel of light, that the man of sin will look outwardly like a lamb, but he will speak the words of the dragon, and the dragon in the scriptures is Satan. Uh, I'm just like I said, I'm going to go into more elaborate detail about this, maybe with one or two videos in the near future. I want to uh, get more information together, especially I believe insight and wisdom the Lord has given me into the papacy in Rome. But I wanted to read to you a few things here that I found on this website that I do happen to agree with um, to open up people's eyes. So feel free to share this video with your friends and relatives that may uh, just not be aware of these things that are going on in the papacy, the claims, the blasphemous claims and heretical claims that the papacy um, has either printed about themselves throughout the centuries or said verbally. If they're not aware of these things and you have loved ones that aren't aware, maybe this video needs to get out so that they can at least have some seeds planted and their eyes opened a little to start looking into these things and prayerfully researching these things themselves. Like I said, to some I may sound crazy, but I truly believe that after much prayer, study, and revelation from the Spirit intimately that he has revealed to me that one of the popes of Rome will be the false prophet slash man of sin, the substitute for Christ that will eventually take uh, Christ's place in the temple, declare himself God, and deceive the whole world. All whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will fall for this lie. Okay, and this is what's written in the scriptures. So let me go on to read uh, from this website here. Throughout the centuries of Rome's existence, the popes have regularly claimed to be divine. As the supposed successor of Peter, the pope claims infallibility. Now we know only God is infallible, okay? The pope is not infallible. Everything that he speaks, the Catholics are taught, or the world will be taught, you must accept and obey without question. Uh, Jesus never left Peter as the head of the church when he left. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Jesus again said that I have all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus does not need any one of us to stand in his place on earth and make these, these decisions for his church. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. The very fact that the Pope calls himself the Holy Father, that he has put himself, uh, exalted himself to be the visible quote unquote head of the church is blasphemy. Uh, let me see here. The position of, um, okay, the Pope claims infallibility, the position of God on earth, and the ability to judge and excommunicate angels. This belief has so assimilated into society's thinking that it is believed by many beyond Catholic circles. According to Time magazine, Pope John Paul's assassination attempt prompted a young Jewish man to say, shooting the Pope is like shooting God. As a matter of fact, Bush Jr. actually said one time during an interview when he was asked by the interviewer, when you looked into Pope Benedict's eyes, what did you see? And Bush Jr. answered, God. And this is just the beginning, guys. This is just the beginning. Further quotes from the Vatican documents show the papacy's belief in papal infallibility. In 1512, Christopher Marcellus said this to Pope Julius II, take care that we lose not that salvation that life and breath which thou hast given us. He's speaking to the Pope. For thou art our shepherd, thou art our physician, thou art our governor, thou art our husbandman, thou art finally another God on earth. And remember, the Vatican, because they consider the Pope's words infallible, the Vatican, whether it's Vatican I or Vatican II, has not taken away these, do these uh, sayings, has not stricken them from their record or apologized for any of this or repented of saying any of these things. The Vatican still upholds centuries of these statements without retracting them. So they still stand to this day because they cannot go back on what they believe the Pope has said and is infallible. So again, um, this man is saying of the Pope, 
take care that we lose not that salvation. So they're saying salvation is found in the Pope. As a matter of fact, if you go to Vatican.com, Vatican.com states that there's no salvation outside the Mother Church. Did, did the church die for you, whether Protestant or Catholic? Did the church hang on the cross for you? Did the members of the body of Christ die for you and become your sin? No. As a matter of fact, one man cannot pay for another man's sin. It had to be God himself that hung on that cross for you. Salvation is found in no one else but the man of Christ Jesus. It does not say in the scripture that salvation is not found. I'm, not, I'm sorry, that you cannot be saved unless you belong to the church, especially the, the church in Rome. Jesus is the one who died for you. Salvation is found in Christ alone, the man Christ Jesus, not the church. But yet Vatican.com will tell you there's no salvation found outside the mother church in Rome. This, again, is blasphemy and goes against scripture. There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, not a priest, not the pope, and not the Roman Catholic Church. So this man says, take care that we lose not that salvation, that life and breath which thou hast given us. The Pope gives us life and breath. For thou art our shepherd. I thought Jesus was our good shepherd. Thou art our physician. Jesus is the great physician. Thou art our governor. Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. Thou art our husbandman. No, Paul says, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I promised you to one husband, to Christ. Thou art finally another God on earth. Yep, this is what they claim. Just recently in 2004, Bishop Patrick Dunn of Auckland said, it seems that Pope John Paul II now presides over the universal church from his place upon Christ's cross. <laughs> the gloss of extravagance of Pope John uh, the 22nd says this, but to believe that our Lord God the Pope, the establisher of said decretal and of this could not decree as he did decree should be accounted heretical. So uh, they're saying here, but to believe that our Lord God, the Pope, remember the man before him said, um, thou art finally another God on earth. And then this man says here, our Lord God, the Pope. Now these are words from the popes themselves coming up here. In 1302, Pope Boniface said this in a letter to the Catholic Church. And remember, none of these things have been retracted over the centuries, my friends. Please Google the blasphemous claims of the Pope. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define, meaning the succession of popes, that it is absolutely necessary for the salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman pontiff. No, we are to be subject to one head, that is Christ. Uh, okay. It says here, uh, but the supreme teacher in the church is the Roman pontiff. No, Jesus said you have one teacher, the Christ, that his spirit would guide you into all truth. He said, call no man teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The Roman Catholic Church says, but the supreme teacher in the church is the Roman pontiff. Union of minds, therefore, requires together with a perfect accord in the one faith, complete submission and obedience of will to the church and the Roman pontiff as if to God himself. I could go on and on and on. Like I said, I will continue uh, with this, but uh, I, I don't have a lot of time to get into much more today, but this is just a preface or a refresher video of things that I feel like I've presented before on the blasphemous claims of the papacy in Rome down through the centuries. Um, I will be making further videos in response to the email that I've received. Uh, please feel free to share these videos. You may have relatives or church members that are well-meaning, but truly believe that the papacy in Rome uh, is benign, that they're, uh, that they're fine, that they're godly men, um, and I'm here to expose uh, that they are not, that they are looking like the lamb on the outside, but definitely speaking the words of the dragon. Uh, Pope Francis himself has come out and said that even a personal relationship with Jesus outside the church is considered dangerous. Uh, there are many other things that um, Pope Francis has said that are heretical and are the words of the dragon himself. As I said, I will get into further detail later on. Uh, but thank you for listening. And if you're new to all of this, please research yourself prayerfully the blasphemous claims of the papacy. And I do personally believe that one of the popes of Rome will be the substitute for Christ, the man of sin slash false prophet that will one day declare himself God to the world. And whoever's names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will fall for this deception. So prayerfully, prayerfully research these things yourself. God bless you today.